Gary Lawless from the Golden, the Vegas Golden Knights, and he's the Vegas Golden Knights insider. And Gary, what the hell do you do for the Golden Knights? Well, first of all, you're not lucky. I owe your husband a big legal bill. So if I didn't, if I didn't do this, I'd be in, uh, I'd be in trouble. He'd get the collectors uh, on my back. Paige's husband, Paul, and I have been friends uh, since we were kids. Uh, what do I do for the Golden Knights? I am, uh, well, I'm a sports writer. I worked for the Winnipeg Free Press and TSN in Canada for a long time. Was on television with TSN and then it was on radio as well. So I kind of do all of that for the Golden Knights. I, I'm a columnist on uh, VGK.com, write lots of stories. Uh, I'm on the television broadcast. And I also am a color commentary on, uh, uh, on the radio broadcast for the Golden Knights as well. So I'm busy. So we wanted, that is phenomenal. And we wanted to talk to you because with COVID-19, we saw the NBA cancel, then the NHL. Suspended, and then, not cancel. Suspended. Can't, uh, sus <laughs> Big difference. Yeah, agreed, 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 agreed. <laughs> um, but it my your heart starts to drop as a, a fan and you wonder what the hell is going to happen so what was your initial reaction when when you heard that uh, mandate come down we were on the road we were in western canada and it we were in winnipeg uh played the jets on a friday or saturday night we lost didn't go well and the next game we played was in calgary and prior to the the Calgary game, the news came out that because of COVID-19, no one was allowed in the dressing room except for players. All interviews would be done in the hallway. Hmm. Played that game in Calgary, went to Edmonton, same thing. And by the time we got to Edmonton, I was, you know, making some phone calls and asking questions, and it was, it was starting to look serious. We, we won the game. We won in Calgary. We won in Edmonton. Got to Minnesota to play the wild and we were out for dinner uh, all the broadcasters the night before the game it was a Wednesday night we were supposed to play there on Thursday and word came out that the NBA had suspended their season and we quickly paid our bill and went back to the hotel to the hotel lobby bar because you wanted to be around people from the organization and kind of start to hear what was going on and I was texting my colleagues from TSN, Bob McKenzie, Darren Drager, uh, Elliot Friedman and Chris Johnson from Sportsnet. What are you guys hearing? And there's the, the report was that, then shortly after Gary Batman came out and said, we're going to have an emergency board of governor's conference call tomorrow, tomorrow. And as soon as I heard that, I knew that the season was suspended and sure enough, uh, we stayed up way later than we would have the night before a game drank all of our per diem and we still had a few days left on the road so uh, uh, the next morning we woke up and uh, there was an email I got up at like 6 30 in the morning there was an email saying no don't come to the rink uh, no morning skate wait for future uh, information and later that day we got the news that the season had been put on pause sheesh yeah and um and then what was the um I mean, you being based in Vegas, which is such a, I mean, it's about entertainment. It's about hotels. It's about gambling. It's about yeah. events. I mean, what's, I mean, your whole community has been rocked. So what, how are, how did people respond in Vegas? 45 million people come to Vegas every year. It's the entertainment capital of the world. So uh, our governor, Steve Sisolak, uh, you know, well, that was a Thursday. We flew home on the Thursday from Minnesota. I landed. Uh, my daughter's school had been canceled. Mm -hmm. She was, uh, you know, she came home with all of her workbooks. She's, she's in grade four. She came home with all of her workbooks. And uh, there, was, there were emails from the school saying there's going to be a change here in Nevada. It's going to come fast. And that weekend... Governor Sisolak closed the strip, closed all the casinos, uh, clo and then very quickly closed all non-essential businesses. So Vegas, Nevada could have been, I think, could have been one of the, the, the worst hotspots in the world 
if they hadn't have acted the way they did. And I think we have around 4,000 cases. It's been uh, remarkable how few people have, uh, have been affected. There's been some deaths, obviously, and that's tragic. And the, uh, the economy here is in, uh, is in shambles as a result of this. But the Nevadans really came together to stay at home, and they have. And, um, you know, I think that I, I'm very confident that Vegas is going to rebuild. It's going to be – who knows what the new world's going to look like, but uh, Vegas will come back from this. There's, there's been a rumor that Vegas wants to be kind of a trial city of uh, coming back early. I yeah, mean, no, not that's uh, not a rumor. That is our mayor, uh, who is um, really not in charge of any of these decisions, uh, had, went on uh, CNN and had an interview with Anderson Cooper and he said that what we were doing was insane. Um, Governor Sislak's in charge. Uh, the Clark County Commissioner is in charge, and they uh, they have a different opinion than her. So uh, uh, we're not uh, we're not going to be a test. We're not going to be guinea pigs uh, for uh, for anyone. Which is uh, I'm thankful for that. Now, have you been working at home, or do you go into the arena? And, you know, home. with safe distancing. Home. home. Yeah, home. Yeah, no, this is uh, this state has taken it really serious, and uh, if you're not. Uh, you know, in an essential field, you're not going to your office, you're staying at home. And it's, uh, um, you know, I, I drove by our office uh, the other day, there was one car in the parking lot. So uh, wow. we're, we're shut down. We're working from home. And uh, you know, we've done a ton of Zoom casts, podcasts, I've done a lot of writing. And we've been able to really uh, generate lots of content from uh, from our homes. It's been great. And I can imagine with thousands and thousands of hotel employees now not working, can you feel the presence of people around or people are just all in their homes and you can't, you can't see them? Yeah. You know, uh, I went for a bike ride this morning, like it uh, left the house at five forty-five to go out to Red Rock Canyon and ride with the guy. And there's tons of people on the road cycling. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the, um, uh, if you go to the, the hiking trails in Red Rock, they are, there's lots of people doing that. And it's social distancing. They're being careful. But, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, the Strip looks like a ghost town. But you know, there's, there's cars on the street. It's, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not surreal, but it's, uh, it's, a little, it's a little odd for sure. And how's your family coping? Well, they're, uh, originally they were really happy to have me around because I travel a lot. That's faded. They're, uh, <laughs> they're, uh, they're ready to see my, uh, my suitcase getting uh, pulled out of, the, out of the closet and see my uh, Petuska moving its way down the road, for sure. And prior to all this, was it pretty cool seeing other um, fans from other cities just so excited to see their team play in Vegas and take advantage of the holiday? Is that how, was it working? Uh, well, we're, um, we're one of the most successful franchises in the National Hockey League. We've operated at 105% capacity since, uh, since we started. It's one of the most expensive tickets in the NHL. You can get a ticket for a game, but you have to buy it on the, on the, on the aftermarket and you, uh, you pay handsomely for that. So, yeah, it's listen. It's fun when uh, the Canucks are in Vegas. There's you know a thousand, fifteen hundred people from Vancouver make their way down. A lot of people come and come to what happens around the game because it is hard to get in the game. But that you know it's it's all nice and warm here, and we've got all kinds of great restaurants, open air markets right around our facility, and people just come and hang out, watch the game on a big screen. Uh, they all wear their Canucks jerseys and. Uh, and unfortunately, they, you know, we're, Vegas has been and uh, looked after the Stanley Cup. And I dropped the guy off at the hotel and I said, OK, well, we got to get rid of this. You know, you're going to take the cup because that's your job. And he said, just come back and get me in a couple hours. So I drove off with the cup and no, no called my friends and said, you're not going to believe this guy's left me with the Stanley Cup. And they're like, are you insane? And um, yeah, my mom said, "Don't be the one to screw that up." Well, 
I have to break, I'm sorry to break it to you, Ruthie, the Stanley Cup's been with uh, more nefarious characters than you. So, uh, uh, I, I, people trust you with uh, selling their homes and, uh, and, and safeguarding their, their financial wherewithal or lives. I'm sure you can handle the Cup. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. I did park the car at some point, though, and went into GM Place, and I said, what am I supposed to do? I like, Do I just hang out for two hours? Just like, Get back in the car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gary, thank you so much. Oh, my um, pleasure. Well, in close, we just wanted to find out from you, how do you think Vegas will, um, what will post-COVID Vegas be like, in your opinion? I guess that's it's the question about the world, really, not just Vegas. The restaurants, hotels all over the all over the globe. I think um, you know. Hopefully, we get uh, we get a vaccine pretty quickly, and everybody can go back to to where we were before. I you know I was thinking about my daughter, and you know, is she ever going to be in a crowded bar? You know, who knows? And uh, that's not just Vegas. That's Vancouver, downtown Peterborough, wherever it's. Uh, um, lots to, lots to find out, you know, our, our kids going to be able to go to camp and, uh, and hang out together in, in those close quarters where without the supervision of their parents, all those things that we, you know, what we call life, 